Hey guys, this is Mr. Boynton coming at you with another video. Uh, this video is about watercolor. It's a very basic video about uh, some of the awesome properties of and some of the techniques you can do with it. Okay, so what you're going to need is you're going to need your watercolor set. Make sure you have your brush. You're going to need two mugs. I would use coffee mugs because they're heavy and you can't flip them. Fill them below halfway with water, below halfway, so that if you spill, uh, you won't have a problem. If you're using your Chromebook with this project, make sure it's not going to get water on it, and everything will be okay. If you're doing this at a computer desk, whoa, don't spill your computer, uh, your water on your computer and electrocute yourself, because your parents would be sad, or guardian, or whoever you live with. They will miss you. Okay, you're going to need a paper towel, too. And you're going to need uh, one of those little half pieces of paper. A lot of times watercolor artists, they rip the paper. That's why I always do that for kids. It's okay to have a ripped edge on a watercolor. It's kind of a neat thing you can do. Um, usually uh, people that do watercolor tape the picture all the way down and they put uh, tape, they, they put masking tape on it and they put it on their, their pants or their clothes to get like a lint in it. I'm not going to do that because I didn't give you guys any tape you can if you want. It's kind of a cool way to keep the paper from wrinkling, but it doesn't really matter, okay, for our purposes. So what we're going to do is a quick little drawing, and then we're going to use the basic techniques of watercolor to do this, and I'll talk about that while I'm doing the drawing. We're going to do what's called a seascape, uh, so it's a picture at like the ocean side or something like that. So what you want to do first is you want to create a mountain on this side, and these are all going to look different, so feel free to kind of mix it up a little bit. And we do a mountain on this side. Okay, we're gonna put uh, gonna put a horizon line back here. Yeah. All right, and then we're gonna put. Uh, why don't we put a little path down the mountain? All right, it's kind of cool. All right, and down here at the bottom, we're gonna kind of go around like this. A little thing like that. Okay. I like to put a second line to show me where the water is. Okay, and then we're going to put a shore right here. All right, and we're going to put a sunken ship out here. So we'll have it kind of foreshortened. Going back, this looks like a Nike swoosh sign. Okay. If you want to write... Uh, U-S-S, and then put your sibling's name on there. It's kind of a funny thing you can do. All right. Some people like to put a big crack in here, or an anchor. Whatever you want to do. And I'm going to kind of draw the water in. So this is our simple picture. Clean up my horizon a little bit. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to use the properties of watercolor to do this. First off, you've got to know that watercolor is portable, so you can take it with you wherever you go. We have a lot of art done on battlefields and things because soldiers could always take watercolors with them. So it's kind of a thing for uh, art from the battlefield. It's kind of interesting because watercolor is portable. You can carry it around. You can take it on vacations, trips. It's a, a neat thing that you can take anywhere. Sometimes it comes in tubes. Sometimes it comes in little pans like that. Um, for me, either one works. I'm not really a stickler. I can make art with whatever I get. And so can you. Um, so the next thing you want to know is that watercolor is soluble. It dissolves in water. And that's pretty cool. It makes it so it's easy to clean up. Um, it could stain. This is Crayola watercolor, so I don't think it's going to stain too bad. But watch out if you're doing it on your mom's nice white tablecloth or something. Uh, be careful of that. Um, so the soluble property makes it so you can soak it up or maybe even fix a mistake if you can, uh, if you if you want to do that. And then the last property of watercolor that we want to talk about is that it's translucent. You can see through the layers of it. So you can use that to make really cool effects. Okay, so we're going to paint this and we're going to, you know, we don't want to make a big mess. So we want to try to keep our water as clean as possible. So what we want to do is we're going to use we're going to use our lightest colors first and then kind of get darker as we go. Okay, so I'm going to get my little brush out of here. And this brush, you can paint a lot of stuff with it. You can paint details with it, or you can put it kind of sideways and paint big areas. So you got to get used to changing your 
the way you hold it to do different things. If your brush comes with a little plastic thing on there, I would not put it back on because you can ruin your brush doing that. I would just throw it away and keep the brush inside here. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're going to need to do a little bit of yellow first. So we're going to grab the yellow. All right. And we're going to do uh, some sand down here at the bottom. So go ahead and hold the brush kind of like how I'm holding it and you'll paint in some sand. And now the, one of the things about watercolors, the, the more water you add, the lighter it gets, the less water, the darker. So if you want to make it kind of splotchy down here like sand, that's great. All right. So we have that. Okay. And then let's make a little sandy path up here. We'll paint our path kind of a sandy color. And I'm just having fun. I'm just kind of popping it in there. I'm not caring too much about staining the lines, but I want to keep it kind of around there, kind of control. And I'm trying to just use one water. All right. I'm going to get the sand over here. So cool. And now while I have that uh, yellow still in my brush, I'm going to get a little bit more water and I'm going to get some blue. And you'll see that I'll get kind of a weird greeny effect from yellow and blue mixing together. And I'm just going to kind of pencil in some water. I don't want to fill up the whole area because I won't get that wave effect if I do that. So, go. And around the boat, I'm going to do a lot of ripples. You just kind of draw in some squiggly lines, but keep them really horizontal. And you'll get kind of a cool water effect. And leave a white space between your shore and your sand because then you'll get like kind of a area that's a what we call negative space where it looks like sea foam. Fill that in. All right. Just gonna kind of go over that. Keep the strokes really horizontal. And now they get further away and I'm gonna get less yellow and I'm gonna go back to the back and I'm gonna really feel this in more solid back here because I want it to uh, look darker. So I'm gonna use a lot of paint. Now as I get forward, I'm not gonna dip it again and it'll start skipping and kind of maybe leaving little areas of white, and those can look like waves in the background. Kids always like to put a shark fin out there, but we're moving forward. All right. Dragging a dry brush can make like a sparkly, kind of a cool effect. All right, so we want it to get darker the further out here. Kind of shading it in. Awesome. Okay, uh, next up, while we wait for our water to dry, we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add some ugly rocks. So we're gonna go back into our dirty water that we're using, and we're going to get some brown, and a little bit of black. We want to stay out of that purple. Don't mix up your black and purple because they look very much the same. And we're just going to put in some ugly rocks. And it's okay if little white areas show because that could be like a highlight on your rock or something. Just having fun dropping it in. And I'm going to use a little bit more brown because I think I had too much black, but that's okay. Putting it in here. Remember, if you get it on the table, you can always wipe it up unless it's an important tablecloth. And then it would be bad. Yeah, I, I, you know, sometimes watercolors, kids, working with kids over the years, they'll have some clothes get stained. Other ones, they'll be like, oh, it washed out, you know. So I don't know if it's the brand or just the kid never, you know 
have to go home and put stain stick on it or something. All right. I'll do the other rock here. Sea rocks at the beach. Okay, a little bit more brown on this one. Having fun. All right. Okay, um, what I want to do is a technique here on the bottom on the sand while I have this brown in my brush. I'm going to hold my hand as a shield and I'm going to tap and I'll get like the spatter effect. Don't get it in your eye because it hurts. Uh, and you can get a sand effect down at the bottom. It's kind of fun. All right. Okay, and then we're going to get the brush cleaned out. And we're going to try to make a gray here. So we're going to get some black, and we're going to put it up in the top of our palette and add a lot of water to it. Kind of thin it out. And we're going to try to put in a little bit on the boat here. We're going to add more water. And if you're really careful, you can take your paper towel and then soak up the water and you'll get a gray effect on your ship. There it is. Cool. And you can go back and do that again. So this is kind of the part of watercolor being soluble. Is that it will soak out. If you press really hard, you can get it to come out of a picture. And I'm kind of going to leave it splotchy because this is an old rusty ship. And I'm even going to add some orange a little bit to the ship. Some rusty orange and a little bit of red. And again, I'm going to try to blotch that out so it's not so insane. Okay, looking good. Go back and get my brush loaded up. And I'm going to put some details on here. Get them really small. And we'll, we're going to come back and do our final details when this is more dry. Just try to get a shadow. Okay. And we're just going to leave that alone for a little bit. All right. And now we're going to add a little bit of bushes to our mountains. Just going to put some on here and they'll kind of grow around. Add some foliage to our little rocky sea, sea mountains. Kind of fun. I feel like putting one up here. It's kind of cool, a little bush. Really nice. Okay. So now we've got that other clean water. We're going to really wash out our brush. Try to wash it out because we're going to try to do the sky. We're going to try to do a technique called wet on wet. And this will mix two colors together. So what I want to do is my water should be dry enough. Um, water, this water right here, not this wet water. And I'm going to use the brush as a spoon to scoop up the water. And some brushes work better than this than others. Oh, see, we got a problem here. And I'm going to try to get the sky really, really wet. So if you if your sky is turning colors right now, it's because you mixed up your water with some color in it. So we're going to get a lot of water on here. Get it nice and wet. This paper's working pretty good. All right, get it wet. And now we're going to add the purple. Purple. Grab your purple. And we're going to start at the top. And you'll notice that it flows down because that is the wet on wet technique. And I'm going to do a second line here. And it'll make a really cool cloud effect. It's kind of fun. And I'm going to do more cloud effects. And this is the wet on wet. OK? All right. That came out nice. And I'm going to try to make lines going down to the horizon. Beautiful. We got a beautiful sky there with wet and wet. Okay, so we're going to clean this out, get the purple out of our brush. All right. And our shore is pretty dry, so we're going to add some shells there. 
And we're going to want to have, let's have some brown shells. All right. And how about, how about a little starfish, orange starfish? And I'm just going to carefully draw in some little creatures and things. Starfish, cute. Be one more. You can kind of flatten them out. I'm going to have a red starfish too. Here's a red starfish. Cool. All right. How about a few purple ones too? Let's add a few purple shells down here. Clams or something. All right, so cool. Okay, and now I want to say our boat is a little bit more dry. So now we're going to do wet on dry. And this allows us to paint over without the paint going crazy. See, you can use this to your advantage. Like our sky is really awesome. And now that this is dry, I can do little details like windows. I can kind of make it look cool. Maybe I can even get the anchor on there. All right, have some more pieces sticking out. Okay. Put some more rocks over here on the shore. So cool. Maybe some tree branches up here. And we got ourselves a fun little painting. Oh, I like those branches. I'm going to add more of those. Okay, so there you go. Um, so what you want to do is you do want to wash out your brush under the sink very carefully and kind of take it and go like this very carefully, like it's a little kitten and brush it so nice. Don't rip its hair out and it'll be great. Okay, so you want to leave this on the table till it dries. It'll take only a couple minutes to dry and then move it to a safe place. Um, what I like to do is work on two watercolors at the same time. Uh, and then one can dry on one and then I can move to the other. I can move back and forth. And again, you can take watercolor wherever you go. And it's a very exciting, very relaxing process. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.